Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video, and today we are going to be taking a look at Ayaka. Obviously, she came back in around, like, mid-2021. We are basically in 2024 now. She has just gotten another rerun, and I just want to see how she fares now in 2024. You know, we've got a lot of new artifacts, we've got a lot of new characters, Spiral Abyss has changed, and we now have people saying that Ayaka's fallen off. But I don't really think that's the case. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to first of all explain why people think Ayaka's fallen off, why I personally think she hasn't, as well as, you know, her best teams, her best builds, it, has anything changed? And that's just what we're going to be exploring in today's video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, and without further ado, let's get into the first section. So, first of all, why do people think that Ayaka's fallen off? Well, it all starts off here in Spiral Abyss. When Ayaka first came out, she was known for her incredibly high burst damage and her ability to clear Spiral Abyss incredibly quickly. So she could shred tankier enemies in the Spiral Abyss and clear up waves of enemies. The thing is, Spiral Abyss has changed, especially Floor 12, because we normally get around like three bosses in Spiral Abyss who all can't be frozen, and Ayaka's main thing is freeze teams, and if you can't freeze an enemy then you lose quite a bit of kill rate. So yeah, the way that Floor 12 has changed hasn't really been nice to Ayaka. But despite that, she still stayed, like, really high when it comes to Spiral Abyss usage rates, and especially when it comes to the most popular teams to clear Spiral Abyss. And almost every Abyss in the top 10 will be a variant of Ayaka Freeze, and it will normally be the, near the top. Even though we've gotten a lot of new characters, you know, we had a whole new Elven come out in Dendro, we have Al Haytham, who's the strongest Dendro DPS in the game, very versatile, very F2P friendly, actually. And then we also have, very significantly in 4.0, Nivellet. Now, when Nivella came out, everyone realized this guy is insane. He's probably the strongest, like, single DPS in the entire game. But despite that, Aika is still very good and very competitive with Nivella and Al Haytham, as well as the likes of all the DPS like Hu Tao, for example. Because Hu Tao is also still on top of the meta. And we also had Farina. Farina synergizes with a lot of Fontaine characters. She makes Nivella even better. She also makes Risley like a decent alter alternative to Ayaka, and you know, I am a bit of a Risley sim, so I do find myself using Risley more. Some people also say that Ayaka's a bit boring to play. I personally disagree. I really like Ayaka. I like Ayaka as a character. I like her gameplay. She's really strong. You know, I, I just think she's a fun character and all. So those are the main reasons why people think she's fallen off. But like I said, I don't really think that's the truth, because she can still easily clear Spiral Abyss. I will actually have a video coming out in about a week, sometime after the Spiral Abyss is reset, and I will be trying out... Ayaka in that Spiral Abyss, and I will be trying her out, probably in a Farina team. I might do two videos, one with a Farina team, one just trying to clear Spiral Abyss. But with that being said, let's talk about Ayaka herself. How do you build Ayaka? How do you make Ayaka a good character? Well, I'd say a lot of people would argue that Ayaka isn't very free-to-play friendly because Miss Splitter is one of the best weapons in the game, and Ayaka with Miss Splitter is a big upgrade. But I personally disagree. I think Aminoma is actually a very nice alternative to Miss Splitter because, you know, at first glance, it doesn't have crit, so people think it's not that good. But attack is equally important. Your crits won't do as much damage if you don't have decent attack. I personally have basically 2k attack, so and I don't think that would be possible with Aminoma. Obviously, Miss Splitter, I'm not going to pull for it, but it will probably give me 2k because it has a higher base attack. But the main thing I really like about this is it can, it R5 especially, like if you get Aminoma on Ayaka, you really want to refine it. Because at R5, you can get up to phase 6 energy if you play her right. You'll probably average around 24, sometimes you'll get 12, but every bit of energy counts because her burst cost is, I believe, 80? Yes, it's 80. And her burst is the majority of her damage, so you want to make sure you have energy. And Aminoma literally just makes Ayaka so much easier to play. Now, when it comes to artifacts, oh, also the new Fontaine Craft was pretty decent as well, so yeah. Now, when it comes to artifacts, some people will argue that Marsha Say might be better if you play her with Farina. We will go on to Farina teams later on and when you should build Marsha Say, but the default build for Ayaka will always be Blizzard Strayer. Blizzard Strayer basically gives you like a free 55 crit rate, which is absolutely, well, it gives you, yeah, give, sorry, it gives 40 crit rate and then Cryo Resonance plus Freezing Enemies will give you around 55 crit rate. Yeah, that'll give you 50 crit rate plus 5, 55 crit rate. So you will basically start off with 55 crit, which is why I have my Ayaka on... This is supposed to be 45, I'm, I'm actually overcapped quite a bit, my, re, my artifacts aren't amazing, although they are still pretty good. So you want this to be around like 45, 230, and you can easily do that without like a crit weapon. I and mean, we can quickly look at my Ayaka build, so we have her on this piece. This flower honestly isn't even that good, 
Just the reason why I like it is it doesn't have much crit, and my other Blizzard's Tray of Flowers do have a lot of crit. This one just has more crit damage. Then here, this piece is actually pretty good. All Basically, all of these substats other than HP are important. And then, you know, you just want to get, like, a good sand, a good goblet, and then you're almost always going to want to go for a crit damage circuit. I wish I had more crit on mine, but the attack is very useful itself. Also, ER. ER is important. When it comes to ER requirements, I personally have her on 130 ER plus Aminoma, which is more than enough to get her ult. Honestly, I could probably run her on, like, 110 ER and be fine, but I just like the extra comfort which comes with Valika. Like, she can be a really comfortable character to play. And we'll move on to alternative builds when we move on in the team section, but yeah. You know, 10, 10, 10 talents, C0, and she easily plays success of this for me anyway. Now, Ayaka, what are her teams? Well, when Ayaka first came out, we knew that one of her best teams was Freeze. And when as soon as we got future characters like Shenha, Ayaka teams just became insanely good. So, one of the most common Ayaka teams is sort of just a variation of this, where you have Shenha... And then you put a grouper in your team, normally Kaza, because Kaza is the best in this team. And then you can put Mona. Some people will put Kokomi. I don't have a Kokomi. You know, we can just, you know, like, pretend this barber is a Kokomi. Uh, this team is very high damage. The problem is it basically has no sustainability, which will turn some people off. It can make some chambers annoying. But it also can make some chambers really easy to clear if you just clear fast enough. If comfort's a problem, you can put Kokomi in here. You know, there are some alternatives, but... The reason why people say Aika isn't very FTP friendly is it mostly because of building Aika herself, it's her teams. Because like, if you have Sucrose instead of Kaza, or you don't have a Shenhai and you play like Rosarian instead or something, it is significantly worse, but it's still pretty good. So like, Aika herself doesn't get too much worse, but she is just way better to play if you have multiple 5 stars. But the thing is, with version 4.2 and 3.0's release, there is, oh, you can also actually do, before I forget, you can do Monocryo if, if you have Shenha. Without Shenha, it's not really worth it. If you do have Shenha, you can run her Monocryo with, like, a Ganyu. I don't have a Ganyu, but, you know, whatever. You know, if you want more sustain, you can put, like, in a Layla, a Charlotte, a Mika, a Diona. Mika's probably the worst of those because you won't be normal attacking too much, but you will in some teams, especially Monocryo, actually. So, you know, M Mika's actually better there than you'd think. So these are her more traditional teams, these are her tested teams, these are the ones which you'll normally see in Spiral Abyss. When you look at the most common Spiral Abyss teams, these are the teams you'll probably see. But you can actually do something different. If you don't have Mona s somehow by now, although, you know, I know a lot of people, I, I've never pulled a Chi Chi. I've put like 45 stars across all accounts, I've never pulled a Chi Chi on any single account ever. Yes, that is a flex for me. Um, maybe my Zhao pulls will go different, that'll be my next pulling video. Stick around for that. I also have a really big surprise for that, so stay tuned. Anyway, Farina teams. There are two variants. First of all, you have the Aika, Farina, Shenha variant, which is very damage focused, and then you will normally switch Kaza Alpha Jean just for healing. This team tends to be better in single target. I will also say, instead of Jean, Cloud Retainer isn't out yet, but when Cloud Retainer comes out, you know, she was officially announced two days ago as of recording, I believe, maybe yesterday as of recording. Where Jean is a very good character when it comes to healing, because Am Animo, you know, she can heal, she can heal for Freena's buff, and you know, Cryo Red Shred. It's a nice team, but it's very single target focus. You want if you're gonna use Aika in a boss chamber, this is the one you want to use her in. And here you can actually make an argument for her, I should say. The thing is, Blizzard Trader will normally give you more crit rate. But if you've never had an Ica before and you have a lot of Fontaine characters, so you don't have Blizzard Strayer farmed, but you do have a Marsha Say set farmed, you can just put Marsha Say on Ica. You will need a bit more curate, you will need 64 curate, maybe a bit less if you somehow get Freeze and Cryo Res. So, yeah, your curate requirements will be a bit different. And I will say for Ica, you normally want a 1 to 2 ratio with about 100 curate or as close to 100 curate as you can, just because it's really nice to crit on all 20 of her hits in her ult. Like, it increases your damage by a lot. Crit rate is very important in Ayaka. So that's the single target variant. You also have another variant where you can swap out Shenha for one of Mika or Charlotte. I don't have a Charlotte leveled. Charlotte probably over Mika, I'd say. But, you know, both get the job done. And then you can put someone like Kaza back in here if you don't have, like, a Cloud Retainer. And this team will be better in AoE because Ayaka just feels so much better when you can group enemies in AoE together. Like, even if it's two enemies, it's just so much nicer if you can group them up together, freeze them, and deal a lot of damage to them together. But yeah, those are her most common teams at the moment. To prevent this video from getting too long, I won't include Spiral Abyss footage here, although I will tell you this team is very strong in Spiral Abyss. If you want to see Ayaka in Spiral Abyss, 
you can check out my future video which comes out on that when it does i'd say probably give it a week but yeah that's it for most of this video now conclusions is ayaka good yes is she as dominant as she used to be is she the number one dps no but she's still probably in the top five which you know you don't need the best dps in the game to clear spiral abyss when i pulled ayaka she was considered probably the best dps but slowly falling off i'd say by now falling off would be harsh to say she's just no longer number one Although falling from like number one to top five is no shame. She is still a very strong DPS. So if you want to pull for Ayaka because you like her character, don't get put off by people saying she's not bad. If you enjoy her playstyle, if you like her as a character, just pull for her. You, I don't think you'll regret it. I don't use her much, but I still don't regret it because I just like having an Ayaka on my account. Like I said, very good, very fun, nice personality. I just love Ayaka. No regrets whatsoever putting her. But yeah, that's it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you found it informative. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Fontaine might have not changed much for Ayaka, but it's changed a lot for my channel. This is going to be one of the last videos of the year, and I do want to say thank you so much for helping us reach 250 subscribers this year. I actually, we had insane growth over the last three months, and I am very thankful for each and every one of you, and I hope we can carry that into 2024. Maybe by the end of 24, we can even hit 1k subs. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah. Thank you guys for joining me on this journey. Thank you guys for watching this video. When it comes to future videos coming out, I already said you can expect one or two Ayaka Spiral Abyss videos, one with Farina, and I might do one without Farina. You know, I haven't seen what the new Spiral Abyss is yet, but, you know, when we do, we'll see how much fun I have. I am also setting up a new PC currently, so if there are any delays, that's probably why. That's why I also haven't been uploading much. It only arrived today, but I still need to do some setup, so... Yeah, that's just kind of maintenance stuff. Also, for my Honkai Star Rail viewers as well, I my next video probably will be Memory of Chaos. I will be recording that as soon as I set up my new PC. So, yeah, you can probably expect that around Saturday time-ish as of making this video. But, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully I'll see you guys next time. And see ya!